So, uh, so much fruit every autumn. The natives have to gobble down. All those plums, cherries, peaches, loquats, and apricots. Imagine, you're a remote tribe. And you've got 20 varieties of just apricots. Yeah, well, consequently, uh, during the harvest season, uh, the whole Chitrali Valley reeks of rotting fruit. Unhealthy aroma of fruit gas. Mm -hmm. over the whole kingdom. We're talking inverted atmosphere of fruit gas. Trapped. Yeah. Hallucinogenic atmosphere because the fruit, it's not fresh anymore. It's fermented. Fermented. Oh, the magpies like that. Huh? They get drunk on that. Huh? And the cows. Well, they... They, they appear and disappear in the uh, fruit gas vapor. And they, they, they phantom fuck each other. I mean, they're just cows. This is a lesbian cow faux festival? Without the big bad balls of that bootleg, huh? Yeah, he's got a lot of bullshit in. Well... It was during her second season, 1968, in Mastouge, that the queen, oh, the queen, the queen, oh, she knows all the lovely organic fruit lying around her. Free? Oh, yeah. Don't want, don't, 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 uh, don't want to let that go to work. And she's, yeah, I mean, she used to be somebody called Kipling. She used to actually be a man. A, a, a kind of pure macho. You don't want to be around that much, too much, man. And yeah, Kipling, the, she's hip. I mean, she used to be from London. And, and London had some of the first health food stars in Europe. So she thinks, look, my lungs, <laughs> oh, they're growing. Um, I'm going to clean them out. They're clogged up from smoking opium uh, with Sharif before and after. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going on a fruitarian diet. Okay, the queen, huh? She puts her Aladdin slippers down on this, huh? And we're talking two whole cycles of the moon. One and then... Well, hopefully it comes back up in the same pattern. Um, yeah, strict. Fruitarian diet, 60 days. Well, uh, phew. it spaces her out, all right. Oh, yeah. Uh, be she becomes lightheaded. Yeah. Um, genuinely cosmic. Oh, and, and like, <clears throat> kind of walks like a, she's floating off the ground completely. Oh, she's totally in doubt. Yin! Fruit, yin! Well, that complements the yang, bang, bang of her king. Uh, yeah. Fruit, yin, bang, bang, yang? A yang, bang? Every night. I mean, they're they're only eighteen years old. <laughs> Got one thing on their mind. They're not wasting their youth. <laughs> <clears throat> they're fucking it away. Yeah. Well, okay. Problem in Apricot Town here. Okay. Um, the excessive fruit sugar 
in the throat oh. causes Queen Latif, who's got her flower back. Oh, yeah. Queen Latif, uh-huh. Uh, tooth is king. Yeah, her teeth are rotting in her mouth. Too much fruit sugar. Watch out for those pure fruitarian diets. You know, the hippies know the difference. Throw in a few kebabs at sunset. Balance it out. No, no, all fruit. Vain. Queen, this is going to get her in a lot of trouble. Her vanity? Because she's found herself who she really is. And these tribes, people, just let her run wild with it, huh? her new, new self. Yeah. Uh, it's a doomed day, though. On the outskirts of Jalalabad, yeah, I mean, the smuggler queen, uh -huh, the 400 kilos yeah, in the bit for trucks and under the, the, the border and into the Sind and forget about the damn Jalan River. You're excused on that one. Keep your pulse heart rate up over 50, please. Uh, she bites in to her seventh apricot. Gee. <laughs> from her <clears throat> leather pouch. And at that precise moment, oh, these precise moments, huh? They're kind of like a, a rush. Uh, her right front tooth bucks radically forward. Yeah, a buck position? No. And... falls out of her mouth completely <laughs> into the clear, calm, pure water of the Konar. Look at the queen. She's, she's well buffed out. Handsome. I mean, her hair is now down to her ass. It's half matted. This is kind of cool. Not all matted. You don't want to Rasta out the whole way. You know, half matted, hanted. <laughs> uh, she's a handsome female. Buffed out, handsome female. Because hmm. <laughs> she gets lots of exercise. Everybody rides horses up in Chitralo. Yeah. Well, uh, she uh, she gets a tooth that <laughs> didn't know enough to stay home, uh, and she looks at it in the palm of her hand. Oh damn! It's it's cutting off her lifeline. Um, uh, yeah. And in a moment of uncontrollable vanity, she hesitantly bends over in the uh, the Konar River to have a look at herself. I mean, this is a narcissistic moment. We're talking Greek history here. These are all Greeks descents. Not like those Persians up in the Archon. These are Shetrali Greek descents people. And But the problem is that She's got these weighty bandoliers, suppose, and as she looks into the river, oops, they swing forward, and uh, she slips on the slick, sandy bank of the river, and oh, she goes totally head in and <laughs> soaked. I mean, the mule, she's disappeared. Well, this will make an easy trip home, huh? Uh, oh, here she comes. Totally soaked. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Most unceremonious uh, moment here. Uh, yeah. uh, oh, her mule cocks his ears to uh, where she... Uh, oh, there, there she bobs up in the river and crawls back to shore halfway. 
And then, um, because she's going to have a look in the river. It's just like one of those times in life when you have to truly face yourself. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, seven teeth badly rotted. And that one in the front. <sighs> ah, she is appalled by her <laughs> gap tooth appearance. I mean, some people get used to having a big damn gap between their teeth. And other people just can't stand it. Uh, well, that's when a wild. This is a really dangerous notion that crosses her mind. 